Hey, and welcome to a special edition of Cooking with Dorsha, where I take you on my Thanksgiving dinner journey. And yes, it is a journey creating these Thanksgiving feasts. This year is going to be quite simple, not as big and lavish as I would normally do because I'm really tired and really don't feel like I'm in the spirit. Always in the spirit of Thanksgiving, giving thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, number one, who's the head of my life. But I got a lot of other things going on, so I'm trying to get myself there. I was trying to get out of cooking, but my husband wouldn't let it be so. Ah! The only thing about cooking well and cooking good is that your family actually likes your cooking. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so let me share with you. Oh! Before I go into sharing, okay, because sharing is caring, if you have not, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the little notification bell, and that way you'll be able to know when I upload new content. So, let's get into it. So, as I've shared with you before, I have boards where I write down what I'm going to cook when I'm doing larger meals. So Thanksgiving dinner, let's go over this. I wonder if this is reading backwards for you, but don't worry, you know. No dyslexia on your behalf. Thanksgiving, a roasted turkey. I know some people do fry, they do whatever. I'm just very basic. Roasted, but my turkey is juicy and I will share with you how I make it juicy, okay? Cornbread dressing. No, there's no stuffing here, okay? It's cornbread dressing. And no, it's not Jiffy cornbread. So I will teach you how to make the homemade cornbread that goes inside of cornbread dressing. Now, there's also another part of this. So, you know, if you're like, I want to duplicate what Dorsha made for Thanksgiving for Christmas, you can do that. You can do that because I'm going to be sharing my ingredients with you. There are no secrets, although some people are like, this is a family secret, a secret recipe, not here, my friend. Because sharing is caring. I'm trying to share what I do and how I get down with you. So now we can become quick best friends on YouTube, okay? Cornbread dressing. So, major parts. Cornbread, sausage, and yes, I use pork sausage. You can use whatever you want, but honey, I use pork sausage. Now, my dad taught me how to basically do all the basics of Thanksgiving, but you know, I went in and I did make a couple things my own, some modifications. So yeah, um, he usually uses hot spicy sausage. I have a husband that has aversion to very spicy, so I do like a medium pork sausage. And then you have your vegetables, which are just very simple. Your um, celery, bell peppers, and onion. And then uh, we're gonna do our broth, and there's something special that we put in our broth that gives this cornbread dressing a nice uh, flavor. Collards, fresh collards. Um, you see them right there. Normally, I go to um, the Curve Market, downtown Atlanta. They have uh, fresh greens. They cut them up on the, on the spot, de-stem them, cut them, and you can buy them in bags. And I usually would do that, but I don't feel like going downtown and waiting in the line for maybe an hour, two hours. So, so I'm gonna show you how to do that same process because Walmart had a good deal on greens. They were like $2.48 for two big bunches. I got four of them. Won't end up being a whole lot, but you know, I said I'm doing a little something smaller this year. Baked macaroni and cheese, yes, you know, that's an all-time favorite. You gotta have a resume when making macaroni and cheese. You can't have everyone make your macaroni and cheese. Now, I was somewhere recently where the macaroni and cheese was not good. It seemed like they put maybe some cream or mushroom or something. I don't know what that consistency was, but it was nasty. Black-eyed peas and rice. Now, let me give you a short story on this. I, historically, throughout my life, Never like black eyed peas, and that's nobody's black eyed peas. And honey, if I've had people talk, but you haven't had mine, and you haven't had mine. Nah, nah, nah. Well, rule number one I don't like the way they look. Hmm. I don't like the little eyes looking at me. So, number two, I didn't like the way they taste, and number three, I didn't like the way they smell. However, one day. I went over friends and we were going over for something. I don't know if it was a game or New Year's Eve or something. And her husband, who's an excellent cook, he made black eyed peas. 
and that recipe is the one I use and I stick to it. So shout out to Tim Grace because honey, them black eyed peas are so delicious. My children love the black eyed, I mean, you know, I don't want big fans of black eyed peas. You know what I'm saying? I just ew, don't like, but I'm going to share with you that recipe, honey. Now, for those who are traditional and you like the taste of black eyed peas, this may not be your um, cup of tea, but for the rest of us who are like, mm mm, pass, you're going to love this. Not saying that the traditionalists, you may, you'd be like, mm, let me put that in my, um, my toolbox and save that for another occasion. Yes, black eyed peas. Also, giblet gravy. I'll probably give me some little chicken livers. Sometimes I do the gizzards. I think I'm just going to get some livers, cut them up, and I'll show you how I make my gravy. And then, um, of course, I'm not making cranberry sauce, but you know, there are people who do it. Matter of fact, my girlfriend, Alana, she does an excellent cranberry sauce. Well, I like it. My family, they're traditional. Give them that gel, the jelly uh, cranberry sauce, and it is good to go. And then yeast rolls, and I don't feel like making any rolls, okay? So we won't be doing that. But I will show you an excellent brand to buy from the frozen section and they make it do what it do. And as you know, I can make yeast rolls because I've done videos and if you haven't seen, then check out the video that I did on making um, yeast rolls. So, let me show you this. The black eyed peas, you see this? I'm actually going to put these in a bowl of hot water and just let them sit. Um, you know, you normally know, like you, you you clean your black eyed peas. Some people let them soak overnight. I'm not going to do all of that. But I'm going to let them soak in some hot water. Some of the not so good ones, they float to the top. Some people believe you got to do it for 24 hours. Whatever the case is. Do whatever you do. Whatever works for you. But um, these are going into the crock pot. So I just want to let you know that I am using a crock pot. I always use a crock pot when it comes to my black eyed peas. Now, I do want to let you know that when I do the segment on the greens, I'm actually going to clean them, I'm going to cut them, clean them, and then blanch them, and then I'll cook them the day of Thanksgiving. So I'm just giving you a little heads up. My turkey I got from Walmart for $15. It was $14.90 something or whatever, or $80 something. Anyway, but it was a rollback price. It was almost three dollars so thank god i didn't get them like last week or something because that same turkey would have cost me 75 dollars and i know for some people they like to plan in advance but sometimes you know the late bird gets the worm okay <laughs> so yes i have a 25 pound turkey for 14 no, 15 dollars okay so just wanted to let you know that. And with the macaroni and cheese, in addition to elbow noodles, I will also be using ZD. Walmart, holla at you girl. Great value. Okay. <laughs> nah, I'm serious about my great value, honey. You see this, I'm gonna put this on my candy yams. Oh, did I say candy yams? You know what, I don't have that written on my board. I'm gonna have to add that. Yes, I'm making candy yams. What will Thanksgiving be without candy yams, honey? And the candy yams, I think they were like 38 cents a pound, but they were like 90 something cents a pound. So, you know, anyway, I was blessed. I'm a tither, you know what I'm saying? I always look out for tither specials, you know, because God has blessed me to live off of my 90, okay? Some people live better off of their 90 than some people with their whole 100%. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> so stay tuned. Hey y'all, so I'm on my way to Walmart. There is a couple items that I didn't see yesterday while I was shopping, but they were doing a lot of restocking. So hopefully, excuse me, I will be able to get those items and then I can head back to the crib. If not, then on the way coming home, I pass a Kroger, so I'll go there. If I don't see it there, and then my last stop is Publix because Publix is, is literally in walking distance from our home. So, you wanna know what I have on my head? Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. This is called a Tam. Yes, not a beret, a Tam, but I do have a beret. I have a pink beret. She wore a raspberry beret, yeah. Uh, uh. 
Uh, no. She wore strawberry tam. This is what this is. Okay. So I have them in different colors. I got them from a beauty supply store. Um, yes. I think they were like $3 a piece. I got it black, red, white, black and white, tan, brown, pink, fuchsia. <laughs> Yes, okay. If you're gonna do it, go big or go home. Okay, <laughs> they were inexpensive, so just nice to have on your head, you know. When you know, it's like a little warm, but not too warm, you know what I'm saying? So, you'll see me throughout the winter months rocking different headwear. So, anyway, let's go and check out Walmart together and let's see if they got what we need, honey. Okay. I'm giving public some love, so I'm going to go in here and see if they have what. I went to Walmart, but they didn't have everything I needed, but they did restock, so let's check out public. This is what I, one of the things that I needed. Now, if I could have gotten this at Walmart, it would have been half the price, but they didn't have any, so. One more thing that I need, and we'll see if Publix has it. And that is ham hock. I can use another substitute, but I really want ham hock for my black eyed peas. So let's go over here and see if they have any. Oh, that look like sockeye salmon. That looks good. The Wayne ribs. Let's go over here. Turkey wings. Smoked turkey wings. I already got my turkey. I don't see it, people. I can use smoked turkey, but I don't want to use smoked turkey. Let's see how much their turkeys cost. Mm -hmm. See that? But in all fairness, let me see if this is frozen. Yeah, it's frozen. <laughs> yeah, it's still expensive. But hey, you gotta do what you do. But this is the exact same one that was at Walmart for $18. The exact same thing, so. Hey. I don't see it. So, we're gonna make our way. We're gonna make our way probably to Kroger. Wish I could talk to a butcher or somebody. But let's look at the farm. Yeah, you know, that's about the regular price and the tenderloin. I don't know if we do one of those for Christmas or one of these. That's what I've done in the past. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want to do any lamb, so. Anyway. Oh, and one more thing. Let's see how much their frozen turkeys cost. Look at this, people. Do you see that? Look at this little bitty turkey. I could have gotten this turkey. I don't need a big turkey. Look at this. Mitchell, well, turkey, please. Mitchell, Look at well, these turkey. little turkeys. 20 pound turkey for $10. People, this right here is Publix. Okay, let's go to designer. Right of all. $24 for a 24 pound turkey. These are some awesome deals. Now I'm on my way to Kroger. I'm really not a Kroger shop shopper. No offense to you Kroger shoppers, none at all. I'm just Walmart of Publix. And some people, they don't like Walmart. They're just like, it's whatever. And I'm just like, I mean, it don't make no difference to me. I should have stock in Walmart, although I don't. I have other stocks, but I don't have stock in Walmart. However, if you don't like it, whatever works for you, honey, at the end of the day, I balls on a budget and Walmart, you know, helps me the ball on the budget because I do like their great value brand and a lot of items. Some items, not necessarily so. Like, 
when I'm gonna get Captain Crunch. Honey, I'm gonna get Captain Crunch. I'm not gonna get Crunch Captain or um, Crunch Soldiers or whatever generic brands they got out there, right? I'm getting Captain Crunch, okay? <laughs> I don't have to have um, Heinz ketchup. It could be great value. It could be, you know, whatever other hunts or whatever. It's just, it's just not that serious, right? Mustard, a lot of times, you know, I get French or I could get um, great value. It doesn't make a difference. But I usually stick to either, the great, even like for my makeup um, remover, great value um, has a brand. A Walmart has a generic brand of, it's called Equate. And like the products, right? So great value is more of the food. Then you have Equate when it comes to the products. So like, you know, this has nothing to do with, um, Thanksgiving, but I'm trying to help somebody save some dimes, okay? <laughs> so Equate is for the product. So like, um, uh, I think it's Neutrogena or something. They have like the makeup remover. If you look at the active ingredients, the one that Equate has is the exact same. And it works the same. And I've had both, so I know. Um, I also use the Equate, the shower stuff. Like they have the um, one, I forget the name of the brand. It's like right there and then it just went away because I was being nosy. But it's like it has the oatmeal and stuff in it for your for your skin, for the body wash and the Aveeno, for the body wash and the lotion. Well, I get the Equate, um, but it has the same exact active ingredients and it's wonderful because that helps because I have um, dry skin. So yes, um, even with the Equate version of like Nivea or um, the other lotion that I used to use. What is it? I can't even remember. But you get the idea. And it's just like, okay, you're going to get a regular Cottonelle cotton or you can get the Equate, right? Or Q-tips, like uh, Equate, you know what I mean? Like, well, well, what's the big deal? I don't understand. So, <laughs> you know, that had nothing to do with Thanksgiving, but I just want you to be thankful for having this conversation that we're able to bond. You know what I'm saying? Why I do my Thanksgiving day journey, so... <laughs> But I'm just a glam girl, you know. I like the glam, you know what I'm saying? You see the earrings? Y'all remember that video from when Alana had um given me the flowers and the earrings and stuff? You see that? Yeah, and December 5th is my birthday. Hey, it's Sag season, yay! So if you're looking for something to get me, I like Alex and Arnie's. I don't count these are my silver ones. I got gold and rose gold so you know how at you girl alex and ani give me something that has to do with cooking or the gardening world okay <laughs> anyway i'm taking up a lot of our video on something that has nothing to do with what we're doing so on to the next door Kroger. this one we're starting with my uggs that my husband got me for my last birthday these are so comfortable because it's really not all that cold but it's not all it's not necessarily warm so we're going to Kroger as you can see. So let's see if we can find our hammer. This is one of the reasons why I don't like coming to Kroger. It just looks so crowded and disorganized for me. You know, I just had you in public. Nice, wow. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> you see this? It just doesn't look as neat and organized. And if you ask my husband, one thing you know about me, I am the organization queen. And this just does something to my shanana. See how much the Kroger turkeys are costing. There you go. 25 pounds. And you know I got a 25 pound for $15. Look at this. 19 pounds for $30. They're not, they're not as good as even Publix and I am shocked. 19 pounds for $30, that's expensive. As compared to Walmart and even Publix, I'm shocked. Shame on you program, just joking. <laughs> uh, hand sanitizer again. Yeah. You're supposed to put on hand sanitizer before you touch your face and remove your mask. <laughs> oh Lord! Our numbers are down with um COVID. However, 
nobody trying to get sick honey nobody no one do you hear me take this gum out of my mouth so what are we gonna do i can go over to another Publix, but i also know of a meat market it's a mexican grocery store that i like to go to from time to time to get um, meat you can buy it by the pound so i might go over there and see if they have what i'm looking for cannot find my ham hocks and don't you dare say it's the lord saying that i don't need ham hocks okay i don't want to hear that no that's not what's being said what's being said is i should have got them earlier because they're all gone people are eating them ham hocks honey and i don't even need the ham hock per se i just like the flavor and the seasoning in my black eyed bitch but like i told you push come to shove i can use turkey i can also use nut bowl but i don't want I don't want to use net one. Excuse me. You know I'm tired. You know this is my week off. And here I am out in these streets. I would rather use um, the turkey than the neck bones. Because some little bones get on my nerves. I remember last time I used some and some greens. I was like, mm. But normally, like probably 95% of the time, I'm using smoked turkey. And my greens... But uh, rah. sometimes I use no meat in my greens. One time I actually did um, cream collars. I got the idea from a friend of mine, Dakiva. Her husband makes those. And I said, oh, let me try that. So I did, a, um, I did find a recipe. I liked them. But uh, yeah, no one else did. <laughs> like, no, just make your collard greens. I was like, hmm, but I thought they were delicious. You would just have to make it for something that's not like, you know, a high expectation holiday, which I don't think I did. I just did it on a regular, like, type of Sunday supper type of thing, right? But no, do not do them. Oh, you know, it may have been a New Year's Eve. I think it was a New Year's Eve, um, New Year's Day dinner. I think I did black eyed peas and the cream collars and homemade cornbread, some fried fish. Yeah, it might have been that. But anyway, cream collars, try them. I'm, I'm going to do them again. Probably just enough for me because my husband, he just, you know, he's a city country boy. Just some things he just like the way that he like them and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he city, but then he got that countryside, you know what I'm saying? Because he got a little farmer in him, got the little country in him. But then the other part, yeah, he straight city, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't even look at me some type of way, okay? Because <laughs> the Superman will come out. <laughs> Woo! He bowed about it. <laughs> don't don't let don't let the beard and the smile fool you, child. Do not let it fool you. But you know, it take one to know one. We're both Saggies, right? So I'm December 5th and he's December 8th. And uh yes, we are wonderful people. But just like everyone else, there's another side. You wanna bumble with the bee, huh? Oh uh. <laughs> anyway, on our way to the Mexican market. Uh, take you with me. I'm a, I'm recording. I'm recording for my YouTube channel. Say hello. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Uh, okay. Yo quiero. Uh, como dice ham hock. Ham hock. Ham hock. No ham hock. Yeah, but the ham hock. You don't know what the ham hock is? Work with me, people. Work with me, people. Hey people, these ham hocks do not want me to be great. I'm here to let you know something. Do not want me to be great, okay? Like I am trying to be great. 
stack on hemlocks. Who would have thought? They're all sold out. Out of all of the shortages that we could have, we have a shortage of hemlock. And all the people who don't eat pork, it's like, praise the Lord. But I didn't say there was a pork shortage, honey. I said ham hock. Okay. <sighs> ham hock. Plenty of pork. What the ham hock? What happened? I thought people all switched over to the, the daggone turkey. And they were like, I don't know what a ham hock is. Okay, so... Notes itself, when you go to Mexico, don't expect to see any ham hock, okay? Okay. Let's go over to this <laughs> grocery store. I think it's called, what's the name of this thing? People, here I am going to Ingalls. Can you even see that sign? Ciao. I, I don't think I've ever been here. The whole time I've lived here. So, here we go. This will be your first time as well. <laughs> I don't know exactly where I'm going, but I'm going to figure out. It doesn't look that bad. It's nice and clean. I don't know what I had in my mind, but... Not bad. How are you? I'm fine. She all up in my video. <laughs> oh. Look, they got tons of the flour and stuff. Look, Douglasville Best Kept Secret. Ingles. Okay. Holla at, at your girl, Ingles. No, just joking. I'm here out of desperation. Let's see what they have. Come on. We need some ham hocks. Let's see how much air for membership hun that'll be working me let's see what they have down here oh i think we found we found ham hock look is this it so i'm getting to more than what i would have normally paid for ham hock but Hey, that's what I get. So let's go and see what they have over here in the adult beverage section. I want some Stella Rosa. Let's see if they have any. Mm. Okay. They have some beer. I don't want any of that. I don't want set at home. I don't want any of that. Ooh, child. No. Okay. Hmm. No. No. No, they have cupcake. That's pretty. Okay. But that's not what I want. I want some Stella Rosa, which means that I'm going to have to go to the liquor store. So. Okay. Now we're headed to the adult beverage store on my side of town. Let's see what we're working with. You know I have almost all of these right except for the regular one. I have apple, I have vanilla, I have peach. I have all kind of them. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for Stella Rosa. Look at that. $10.99. That's what I'm talking about. 
at Walmart that's more expensive. So I'm going to get, I think I'm going to get, I've never had the um, peach one. They have a French vanilla, Ruby Rose. I mean, come on, Aunt Linda. Are we in Stella Rosa heaven? Pineapple. Tropical mango, rose, red apple, blackberry. I mean, come on. This is just a beautiful thing. I love the black. I probably should get one of those. Yeah, and I love the watermelon. That is also good. Okay, this is going to be hard. But let me get the black because I definitely want that. And I want to try something different. So. Let me get the French vanilla. I'll tell you how that turns out. Yep, so a whole section of Stella Rosa and all flavors. Okay. Now we are on our way home. Okay. I'm getting out of these streets. I know you're like, this woman, she has talked about everything. But I told you, this is a Thanksgiving journey that you're going on with me. Um, not just the cooking, because, you know, that's what we do. That's what we have to do. But there are things that happen outside of the kitchen. And, um, like, the shopping for the foods. I thought that was important to take you along for that. And then also, you know, it's my birthday, so I had to take care of a little bit of business, you know, when it comes to um, my vehicle. I don't get pulled over by the popo. Anywho, and uh, yes, I got me some Stella Rosa so I can go out there, go out there with my garden family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, because that's happening tonight, honey. Yes. I know I shouldn't even have said that because it's probably dating the video, but I don't care. I'm getting my business taken care of, honey, out here in these streets. You'd be like this girl is so animated oh what you didn't know is that i went to mcdonald's and i like their caramel mocha it's a small caramel mocha you can get it from starbucks as well this was two dollars starbucks is gonna cost you a lot more um double plus and uh I think this one tastes better now. Starbucks does have some drinks that McDonald's doesn't have that are delicious, but two dollars was all I needed, honey. And I'm on and popping. So back to the crib and into the kitchen we go. I'm in my kitchen now. Home sweet home. It's the evening. I did get a little rest, uploaded all of those videos that I recorded, freed up some space on my phone, then downloaded that from my cloud onto my three or four terabyte external hard drive. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'm gonna chop this up. I'm, tonight I'm gonna go over what I do as far as my black eyed peas, although that's gonna be a process because like I told you, I'm using the crock pot. Use whatever pot you want to, but for this recipe, I'm using a crock pot, and so I would highly recommend for you to use the crock pot and no, not the insta pot, the crock pot. Okay, so you remember the black eyed peas that I got, and I do want to make a point about the black eyed peas you get. They're not very expensive, but there are cheaper ones. As a matter of fact, great value, you probably get these for like. 50 something cents, 60 cents. This looks like a dollar 60. However, the quality. Now, all beans are gonna have some hard beans in there. That's why you would soak them, right? They're called floaters. You put them in water. Some people like to soak them overnight. I don't necessarily have to do that. You know, we're good. Um, but what I do do is do hot water, it expedites that process so that the floaters can come up to the top. Now, sometimes it may be some of 
the hard shell exterior that may float to the top and it may be what's called floaters. These particular piece may have bits of rock or dirt inside of them. Whatever the case is, they're gonna end up being hard. So you don't want those, okay? So I am going to take you down and show you uh, what I did. Do you see that? Yeah. They have been soaking probably about 20 minutes in hot water. And you see what has risen to the top. I really shouldn't have a lot of hard ones in here because of the quality of the peas that I bought. But I will have some. And then you just get them. And you take them out and you can just toss them to the toss them to the side. But see, these this is the little shell that I was telling you about. The other thing is, um, when I put them in the water, I was going through them anyway. And it's not a lot of peas, so it was easy to go through them. And, you know, shake them and see what you're working with. You see this? The ones that are bad, they will stick out. Believe you me. They will stick out. But these, this particular brand, they really don't have a lot of um, what would end up becoming floaters. These are very, very good um, black eyed peas. But like, you wouldn't want that. You see that? So what I'll do is I'll go through these and then I'm going to rinse them again and let them soak in the hot water while I move on to the next step. Moving on. Hey, hey, hey. Jonathan McReynolds. But anyway, um, so we're moving right along to the collard greens. The collars. People got these all in their garden. We'll probably have some for Christmas. That's what the hubby is trying to tell me. But what I'm going to do is show you how to take care of your babies, honey. We're going to de-stem these and chop them. Very simple. Doesn't take a degree. Rocket science. And there are people who like the stems in them. I'm just not one of those people. So, follow me on down. I put them on this side, it's easier to just, and by the way, my knives are very sharp. I mean, extremely sharp. They're German knives. I got them on sale for about $300. But yeah, they're very sharp. Um, you may also use a knife um, sharpener every so often. I really haven't had to do that. I've had these for about two years. But you have to be careful because Hunty, one time it just slightly touched me. You hear me slightly and I was nicked. So you see I'm de-stemming these, right? And so let me show you, I'm piling these up as I'm de-stemming de these. Um, Very simple. You don't have to go very hard down on it. Oops. And I'll just do a couple more. I'm not gonna bore you with this. I don't wanna bore you with this. <laughs> don't you just think of a word and all of a sudden a song comes to your, to your mind? That happens to me a lot. I ask my husband. One more, one more. You get the idea, right? Just make sure your knife is sharp. I'm using this paring knife because it's made for things like this, you know, like. Now, let me show you this, move those out of the way because I have um, about three more bunches to go. And I wanted to do these tonight because the greens are not gonna keep well in the refrigerator for an extended amount of, of time. So I'm going to do this so that I can soak them with some kosher salt um, for an hour or so. Then I um, empty that water out, do it again. I wanna make sure that my greens are clean, people. So I have that nice and lined up. 
Now I'm gonna roll this. You see that's how I'm rolling. Rolling like you would roll. I don't know what you would roll, but anyway. <laughs> I was gonna say an egg roll, but that's not necessarily what you do. Now this knife is extremely sharp, so yes. You see that? Yes. Voila. And there you have it. Look at that. It's raining greens. Hallelujah. It's raining greens. Whoop. There you go. Your black eyed peas, right? You don't have to get this brand, but if you want less of those hard ones, just get a quality brand. If you want to go cheap, then, you know, I mean, there's consequences for everything. Um, I got ham hock. You do not have to use ham hock if you don't swing to the pork. You don't have to. We don't have high blood pressure, cholesterol, or glucose issues in our family. Praise the Lord for good health, because your health is your wealth. However, that might not even be a reason why you don't. You may not like, you know, the taste of it. whatever your thing is. Just get you something to season your water. So, I'm going to use these ham hock. Now, my ham hock usually don't look like this. They are um, more, they're like meatier. These look like they've um, been on a keto diet or something. I don't know. Uh, so, you're going to need your ham hock. You're also going to need some sausage. You can use smoked sausage, beef sausage, turkey sausage. You know, I'm using kielbasa, okay? Um, gonna need one of these Lipton um, soups. Just a packet, one packet. Need half of a large onion. And you're gonna need some Italian seasoning. Now you can get whatever brand you want to get. I do recommend you have a masher. I'm gonna need that for one particular part of the recipe. Now, like I told you, I'm gonna use a crock pot. Yes. I'm going to put my ham hock in here. Then I'm gonna fill it halfway. I'm gonna let the ham hock and the half of onion cook for about an hour on high. Um, it's gonna jump start the meat start to um, take some of the flavors, soften the meat, whatever. Once it gets there, then I'm going to put my peas in there and I'm going to set it and forget them. I'll put it on low and um, let it do what it do. Matter of fact, my um, mine comes in four and six, which are the high hours and then eight and 10. So I'm gonna probably do like eight hours. I'm just gonna um, cook on low. It really, um, for the eight hours. Um, but I will at some point, usually I'll do it overnight. So that's probably what I will do. So when I wake up in the morning, the peas will be swollen. There will hardly be any water. I don't really want a lot of liquid. So, um, cause you'll see why. But anyway, so that's all I'm going to provide you for today. So guava family, guava, guava. Oh, by the way, this is Stella Rosa, the vanilla, French vanilla, and yes, guava. Day two, back in the kitchen, back to my Thanksgiving vlog. Yes, day two. Now, before we get into today's activities, check him out. His name is Grogu, AKA Baby Yoda. And here he is, Baby Yoda Simmons. Bam! Yes, yes! My husband got me him last Christmas. Yes. Um, if you watch The Mandalorian, then you know. And if you don't, then the only thing that you probably have to um, think of is Star Wars. But he's unrelated. And no, this is not Yoda as a baby. But I like to call him Baby Yoda. Yay! So, because I'm rocking my Baby Yoda, hey, Grogu, um, check out. Can, can you check out what I did today? Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's, just, it's a whole vibe, okay? Okay, yeah! So, we're getting ready to get to these black eyed peas. I'm gonna take you down with me and I'm gonna walk you through what I am doing. Uh, black eyed peas have been cooking overnight on low. I want you to check out all of this. These are the peas. You see that? Here's the ham hock. Oops, it's falling off the bone. Hold on, hold on. See, but that's what you want. You want it to fall off the bone just like that. Matter of fact, we're gonna take this bone out, place this to the side. Here's another bone. Where my dog's at? <laughs> oh, Laura. Yes. They got that good stuff. So anyway, this is what I want you to do. You can get a, um, a bowl if you want to, but um, I have a large um, measuring cup. And I'm putting them into a cup. I'm taking my masher and I'm mashing them. Now, I'm going to pour them back in here. Yes. And that, later on, I'm gonna make sure I get all the flavor out of here. Later on, I'm going to um, take that skin out from the ham hock. That is my entire kielbasa. I might take some of it out now. Oops. Child, you better be careful because this stuff is hot. Now I'm gonna take my Lipton onion soup. I'm gonna pour that in here, the whole thing. Oops, look at me over here, dropping things. This is my garlic powder. Whatever brand you use will suffice. I don't know. Maybe that was a cheese bar. Maybe a tablespoon. I'm gonna some black pepper. Now, Italian seasoning. I'm gonna put this in the palm of my hand so you can see how much I'm using. See that? Yes. I'm gonna stir this up. And one last thing. Half a stick of um, butter. Great value. Walmart, holla at you, girl. Holla. Holla! Now, I'm going to put that back on. I'm going to put this on six hours high and let that cook down. Once that finishes, then I will show you a photo and then we will put salt as needed. But make sure the salt is the last thing that you add because we don't want salt to anything, okay? While the black eyed peas are cooking, and let me correct myself, not six hours on high, four hours, and then I'll check them, whatever. When I mash them, um, what, it, what it's going to allow the black eyed peas to do is thicken. I do the same thing for my red beans and rice. 
yes uh so the things that i will take care of today uh i'm going to make cornbread but i'm going to just make it in preparation for tomorrow i'm also going to uh, chop up my vegetables for the dressing using my food processor um, and put that in a large Ziploc bag in preparation for tomorrow. I'm also going to boil my noodles for the macaroni and cheese. I'll do that in advance, but before I go to bed tonight, I'll make the baked macaroni and cheese and I will also make the candied yams um, yeah, so I need to, to peel the sweet potatoes and cut them. Like I said, normally I go to the curb market. They already have bags of yams that are already um, peeled and chopped up and they sell them in bags and you can just grab bags and stuff. So I've created more work for myself by not wanting to go downtown and stand in the line for an hour or two. I think the longest I stood in line was about two and a half hours. It was ridiculous. So anyway, but I do need to go to the store and see if I can find chicken livers. I'm having a hard time finding chicken livers for my giblet gravy. Uh, to, oh, I already have the cranberry sauce in the refrigerator. As soon as I get that, I pop that right in the refrigerator. There's no need for it to be out because we want it nice and cold. And uh, my greens are still soaking. <laughs> But like I said, tomorrow morning, I will put my greens on the in the oven, I mean, on the stove with my um, smoked uh, turkey. So that would be that. I'm trying to make sure that I can free up my oven because tomorrow the turkey is gonna take some time because it is 25 pounds, right? And right now the turkey is over here in the sink in a, a cold water bath so it can, um, thaw because it is hard as a rock and uh, yeah I think I basically have everything I might do a um, pound cake I used I used to do um, well usually a sweet potato pound cake but I think I might just do a sour cream or a butter or seven up pound cake and I have like all the above ingredients so I might do a seven up pound cake I don't know but I was like, yeah, I need to do a dessert. I really don't feel like doing a dessert, but hey, Christmas. Uh, oh, well, you know, usually for Christmas, I don't um, repeat Thanksgiving. I think that is so boring. So I try not to do the same thing, but there are some things that I didn't do, like the ham and some other meats and some cabbage and string beans and, and mashed potatoes and sauerkraut and all this other stuff. So, but that's not going on this Thanksgiving, honey. I'm making it, keeping it very simple, simple and sexy, okay? And uh, yeah, I'm thinking about my table. We have um, two round tables. So what I normally do for the um, four, each what I normally do for the holidays is I'll take our long white tables and I'll do what's called estate dining so I may share with you me setting the table shout out to my girl Nikki the OCD ish chick in Maryland DMV whoop, whoop, whoop. anyway <clears throat> but I do have to pick up my sons um, they live in an area called Buckhead, which is about 15 min 50 minutes from where I live. So I'm going to pick them up. Um, and then you'll probably get to see them uh, in the kitchen with me. We normally have a good time when we are together. Because we are family. Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. Let's get to it. <clears throat> I am on my way to pick up the guys and uh, it is better than what it was. We dipped down into the 30s last night. Auntie, I promise you, mm, don't like that type of weather. But um, my garden fared well. Well, I mean, brassicas are made, you know, for this type of weather. 
But I sure did want to go out there and hug my Brussels sprouts and my cabbage. Be like, it's going to be okay. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to make a quick stop at my Publix. The Publix I took you into the other day that wasn't my Publix. But I'm getting ready to go into my Publix. Where actually like the cashiers and the manager and all those uh, people like, they know me by face. And uh, they speak to me at the cash register and stuff. You know, my neighborhood Publix. <laughs> but it was crazy because when we lived um, in the other location where we lived, where I lived for seven years, they um, they knew me at that one too. There's only so many Publix out here where we live in these birds. But anyway, so that's what I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna jump on the highway I'm gonna get the guys and we'll be headed back to my side of town just keep you updated in the car I just sanitized my hands and um, I just want you to see the purple because you know it goes with the whole thing you know what I'm saying <laughs> I am now well I just finished picking up um, the chicken livers for my giblet gravy Publix had three packs left so I took um, too. I saved one for somebody that's probably looking for chicken livers and they're in absolutely none of the other stores. So, <laughs> that was my good deed for today. Now I'm on my way to pick up my son. So, ciao! So I'm at Carabas with my son. Say hello. That's the youngest one. He's 18. He is an adult, a young adult. And here's the one that's a little more seasoned adult, Amir. Kind of crazy stuff. So uh, to say season is very a huge understatement. <laughs> yeah. So there you have it. Yeah, 21. As we all know, who are over 40 is not seasoned, but <laughs> he has some salt, a little bit of pepper. Hey, I'm back and I'm about to make the cornbread for my cornbread dressing. So let's get to it. I'm gonna put all of my wet ingredients in first. I have doubled the recipe for this. So I have eggs, I have milk. This is whole milk. Use whatever type of milk you want, but I'm using whole. And this is oil. I'm using canola oil, but you can use vegetable oil. I would not recommend using um, olive oil, however. I'm whisking this together. I'm gonna make sure your eggs are deep. You don't want the whole yolk. All right, now I'm going to add my hot rise yellow corn milk. some all-purpose flour and some sugar and voila that's it And make sure you stir it really well. Get your flour and your cornmeal off of the sides. I'm getting it off of the whisk because now I'm going to transition into a spoon to make sure I get everything off the bottom. You see that? Good. Now, I'm 
I actually, I actually had a pan in the oven, 450 degrees with oil, a little bit of oil in it. I'm gonna take my batter, I'm gonna pour it in here evenly. Make sure you get all of your batter. Scrape the sides. And voila. Now you do not have to heat your pan before you put the cornbread in it. I like to do it. Um, the edges and the bottom, especially the edges get a nice little crunch to it. I like it, but not necessary. Now, if I was making cornbread, I know you like, that's a lot of oil. If I was making cornbread for um, just to eat, I wouldn't necessarily use this pan. I would put it in my cast iron skillet because mm, something magical about a cast iron skillet. Now I'm gonna put this in the oven at 450 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. These black eyed peas, there you have them. I'm gonna put these over some rice and they're gonna be absolutely delicious. Oh, I'm moving on to my candy yams. And I have a special appearance from my youngest son, Sharif. Come here, Sharif, come here, Sharif. Holla at the people. He actually peeled and cut the yams. Look at him, isn't he so handsome? Look at him, yes! Early admission, I won't say what school because he hasn't, I guess, posted it or something. But anyway, so we're gonna move. Okay, so here we have our sweet potatoes. I really don't know how many this was. It was about how many, Sheree? Don't know. Um, maybe six or seven, maybe eight. I don't know. But anyway, cut them up, and I want you to just take a look at the thickness of them, right? Okay, so I'm going to start with my spices. Cinnamon. Now, you can do this differently than what I'm doing, but I just wanna make sure that I get the amount of the spices that I really want on here. And as you see, I am not measuring, I'm just going happy, okay? I need, I love cinnamon, okay? Now I'm gonna do nutmeg. Now, I don't need as much of the nutmeg. It is quite potent and then the ground cloves. Even less of this, okay? That's good. Toss it. Yes, you know. And the bottom line is, once this creates its own um, juice, it's all gonna just um, mesh, blend together. I have some white sugar. Great value. Walmart, holla at you, girl. Yay! That is actually my oven. Sharif, if you can turn the timer off for me, that would be great. Just the timer, not the oven. Um, and then I have some light brown sugar. Great value, Walmart. Oh, we don't want to waste any of this brown sugar, honey. Yes. Now, I use both types of sugar because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is candied yams. And you know, the sticky part is the sugar, but also mixed with, bam, the butter. <laughs> If you put sugar and butter together in a saucer, um, you will create caramel. Add a little heavy whipping cream, get that creamy caramel. But yeah, that's the basic gist of that. This is about a stick of butter. Everything else, you know, I just made it do what it did. Now, 
I do end with syrup. I know you're just like, yeah, this is not for the faint of heart, honey. But it will be delicious. You see this? And I am generous. Now, I do not put any water. None whatsoever. Why do I not put any water? You see these things, these potatoes? They already have water in them. So as they bake, the water will come out. And then it's gonna mix with the sugar and the butter. And then at some point it's gonna get ooey gooey. So stay tuned. I'll let you see uh, what it looks like. I'm gonna put them in the oven after I finish my cornbread. It's gonna be about 400 degrees. I'm gonna take a look at them in about an hour and flip them and everything. The potatoes will literally be done, but they're gonna stay in there longer for that candied effect. And I'll let you see it. Hold tight. Okay, guess what's done? The cornbread. Woo, do you see that? Do you see that people? Tag team back again. Check for the record. Let's begin. Come on, party people. Let's make some noise. Door should make some corporate. Let's. Uh. <laughs> anyway, I know you just probably like this woman needs some medicine. I got a little dose of Jesus. Oh, anyway. Yep, so that's the cornbread. So I'll just let that, you know, sit. Whatever. I'm going to fry the sausage. And um, I might get Cherie, my sous chef to do the vegetables in the food processor because who wants to cut onions? Absolutely no one. Who wants to cut bell pepper and celery? No one. That's why you need to invest in a food processor. Just because you sitting in here slaving in the kitchen, you're not gonna get any brownie points because you cut that stuff yourself. You hear me? Them kids are not gonna appreciate it. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, but seriously, they don't care. Um. He, he actually looked at me like, you can't even have me do what? But come back over here. Let me let, let me tell them something. Come on, come on over here so, you know, they'll understand. Look at him, he, he's, so, he's so smooth. You see his hair? I just did it. <laughs> Give me five, boy. I just been looking for it. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, he owed me. Cause that was time taken away from my kitchen. He did that for me, whatever. So I think we're really flowing. Um, Big Bertha over there, she is thawing. So we should be good to go. So I can put her in the oven first thing in the morning and let her do what she needs to do. So I got a couple more things going on and I'm feeling good. I'm really feeling good. So. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you the candy yams um, tonight. If not, the next time you see me, I'll have on a different ensemble, and it will be Thanksgiving. Okay, it's been nice rocking with you today. I want to rock with you all night into. This is our yams after one hour. Now they're going to go back in there for about another hour. But they are fork tender and they are coming along. We are Thanksgiving morning and I have my turkey. She is thawed. She's 25 pounds. Um, I've actually taken the turkey neck out. This is the turkey neck. I'm going to put this in water with some bay leaf and boil it. And these are the turkey giblets, right? So make sure you clean the inside. That's where the turkey neck was. And then in the front, right here, this is where the rest of the giblets were. Okay. Now I need to trim her some because look at that big piece of fat. I'm not used to seeing that. So I have cooking shears. They're a part of my knife set. And I'm just gonna take this off. There you go. Big piece of that. And I'm actually gonna trim her skin a little bit. 
I don't need all of that. There you go. Okay, then we have a little chicken. I mean, the turkey butt. <laughs> Turn her over. She looks good. Now, you see this? I'm gonna trim that fat. And this is good. And this is just gonna fold like this. So, anyway, but I washed her. I'm gonna move this out the way. I'm gonna get the paper out. dry a lot of times people don't cook turkey because number one they don't know how to or number two they just like they made it before it ended up so dry and it was not a hit and I remember one time growing up we had some dry turkey that wasn't a good feeling. You have it. Here's the turkey. I put it in a turkey roaster. Here's a rack at the bottom so it's not um, on the bottom of the pan. And there you have it. And then I'm going to put it in the oven 325 um, degrees for five hours. This is a 25 pound turkey. And uh, I will show you a picture when it's done. And let me get some um, basil. Not fresh basil, dried basil, to uh, top it off on the on the top of it. Of course, you know you put whatever seasonings you want. Um, some people use sage. Some people use the poultry seasoning that um, already comes mixed. Um, you can get that from basically any store. Um, a lot of times I use that, but. Um, this time I wanted to basically do my own so she will see you again in five hours oh and by the way you see this when this pops out the inside of her is done however I also have a meat I am getting ready to do these yeast rolls This is the brand I was telling you about. It is so good. You get them in the frozen um, section, Walmart. And they have them other places. So I'm going to line. Come up in here. wrap and put them to the side and let them rise. This is going to take about three to five hours, probably more so four because my kitchen is warm and I'm going to sit them near the oven, not on the oven, but near. Okay. And I'll give you here are the greens and they've been sitting in the refrigerator soaking in water 
that's how they've been able to maintain their um, texture. See that? But now I'm filling the sink with some more water and I'm going to put some kosher salt in there. Clean them one more time and then I'm going to cook the drink. And by the way, um, salt helps get any type of um, residual dirt off of um, the green leafy vegetables like this. So that's why it's in there. And of course it's going to dissolve, but I'm going to um, rinse them off really good before I let them soak. So now I have my smoked turkey tails or turkey butt. <laughs> um, I'm rinsing it off and then I'm going to fill the pot with enough water to cover them. And then I'm gonna let it boil for about a half an hour. And then I will add my dun 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 dun. Yes, collard green. Youngest Sharif, he is cooking what? What are you cooking, Sharif? This is mild sausage. And what are you making that for? So the mild sausage will cook right. And mild sausage go in the dressing, the cornbread dressing, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> cornbread dressing. Um, so we wait for this to brown up, of course. And and then what else goes in the, the cornbread dressing? Uh, you have finely diced or processed vegetables, celery, white onion, and green bell pepper. And what else? The cornbread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's also a broth too, right? Yes, yes some chicken broth or turkey, turkey broth. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever made Thanksgiving dinner by yourself? Yeah, so now there's some what, third grade? No, sixth grade. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was 12. Okay, so what did you make? I made almost everything. Name it. For, yeah, the baked macaroni and cheese, our turkey, collard greens, black eyed peas and rice, um, the cornbread dressing, what else? Yeah, collard greens. Yeah. Were you proud of yourself? Yeah, that was an accomplishment. Yeah. Do you think you're ready to do it again when you have a family? Yeah. Or, yeah. These are the giblets from inside of the turkey. You have the uh, gizzards, liver, and turkey neck. And I put some bay leaves in there and they have been simmering. This is going to be the broth that I use for the dressing. I am starting my macaroni and cheese. This is heavy whipping cream. I cut up some extra sharp cheese that was in a block. It was a large block. And I'm gonna uh, melt the cheese in this because this is gonna be important to my macaroni and cheese in my dish. If you do not want to do this, then just get some of this. Get like two cans of this, but also make sure you have some heavy whipping cream as well. And there you go. About to do my macaroni and cheese. Last night to save time, I boiled my noodles. And as I told you before, this is a mixture of elbow noodles and ziti. You see the ziti? Yes. Now, before I go adding anything, I'm gonna add my salt. And I'm gonna add my pepper. Add whatever else you're gonna add. Some people like to add garlic and onion powder. They do all kinds of stuff with macaroni and cheese nowadays. This is basic, nothing fancy. Well, I guess the ziti might be fancy to some people, but it's really not. It's just 
the same noodle in a different shape. But it does give you opportunity from, for some cheese to sneak up in those pipes. Yeah. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to add Kobe Jack cheese. <gasps> Great value. Walmart. Holla at you, girl. Yeah. The whole pack. Honey, we want macaroni and cheese. You hear me? Mm-hmm. So I do this before I even put it into the pan. Now, I am also going to add some extra sharp cheddar. And I'm going to save a little bit of this for the end. Add a little more salt and a little more pepper. Okay, now we have that. Move this out of the way. I'm gonna move my pan, my baking dish right here that I have dabbed with butter. I'm going to put this as evenly as I can in this dish. Okay. Mm -hmm. and there you have it. I'm gonna take some more butter that I've already cut, in, cut into squares. I'm gonna snuggle those into my macaroni and cheese just randomly all throughout. Now, I would have added um, this if it was cooler in the bowl. However, <coughs> excuse me, that pepper. But I just went ahead and just poured it on top. So that was my heavy whipping cream and cheese mixture. a little bit. Make sure it goes down. And there you have it. Let me put the remainder of this. put it in the oven, I'm gonna bake it. I'm actually gonna to top it with some paprika. I forgot to um, take that out, but I'm gonna put some paprika on top and I'm gonna put it in the oven, I'm gonna bake it and I'm gonna show you a picture when it's done. You wanna take a peek at the yeast rolls? Bam, there they are. Don't they look lovely? Greens have cooked down some and you see this? And the turkey is at the bottom, but I'm getting ready to season them. I like using this natural seasoning. Put that in there. Onion powder. Love onion powder. Probably one of my most used seasoning. <coughs> Excuse me. Garlic powder. Pepper. Mm. 
Now, I do add butter. I'm gonna add a half a stick of butter. Let that sit out, sit in there. It's gonna melt and do what it do. And my turkey is falling apart. Then the little pieces of the meat will actually, I don't see, see that. The turkey, how it's falling apart. See? Now, I want you to see that this actually has salt in it, but I am going to add a little bit of seasoned salt as well. to cook on low and can you see my pot my pot liquor now I don't like it when the liquid is higher than the greens yeah I don't like that some people like a lot of pot liquor I don't um I put the water in there to cover the meat but then the greens themselves they actually have juice you know what i mean so i don't want more uh pot liquor liquor than what's necessary because when we take our greens out this is just us we don't want a bunch of the juice in our plate you know especially if you have bread and the yeast rolls and a touch or maybe you have it to the side but i don't want a lot of the collard green juice there i'm already gonna have candy yam juice so anyway that's that i'll give you an update so here is my dressing you see around the edges that's one of the benefits of having that oil in the bottom remember what i said um it's really good now look at this you take a knife stick it in there it comes back back out and it is what clean so I'm going to let this just sit and when before we get ready to serve I'll put it back in just for a little while longer to heat it up and we'll be ready to go okay here's the macaroni and cheese and we're almost down to the final um, run with the macaroni and cheese but remember that little bit of extra cheddar sharp cheddar that I had now we can put that on the top yes if you're gonna go there you might as well go all the way go hard go strong or stay home well we're already home so <laughs> there you are i'm gonna put this back in the oven and then you'll see what it looks like when it is to perfection broth just a little bit and remember the broth actually has the turkey fat in it and normally when you make gravy you usually take the fat of whatever meat that you're doing um, and then you'll add um, flour and water to create a roux so I'm kind of emulating that but it's actually with some of the broth so I took flour and water now Add a little bit of this at a time because it will get thick for you. And you see the consistency, just thickening. Okay. It's thickening. And 
yes, I'm making a lot of gravy. cut up um, livers. I'm going to turn my heat down some. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to do it in my hand so I can see about how much salt I am adding. But with the pepper, honey, we go pepper crazy. You know what I'm saying? Let's do a coat of pepper. I'm going to go too gun hole on this with salt. Because this is going to be diluted with some more um, broth. which I'm gonna add some now. You see that? Now this is the thing with gravy. It is easier for you to dilute it than for you to thicken it once it has been heated. Once it has been heated, it's harder to add this in. That's why you start with your roux and then you add um, liquid versus the opposite because if I added this now, I'm just gonna have like big clunks of like flour that's gonna look like um, dumplings. Now I'm gonna taste it. The little bit more that I need is actually gonna calm the salt it's gonna come from my soy sauce. A generous swig of that. I'm actually going to add some butter, a half a stick. Butter makes a lot of things taste good. A lot of things that begin in restaurants, they start and finish with butter. Now, of course, you don't have to do the butter. Um, if you're not going to do the butter, I'm not saying um, do an alternative because it's not going to be the same. You're doing the butter for the flavor. And I don't know if those other things necessarily have the flavor. But I'm going to let this cook and then I'll um, let you see what it looks like once I'm finished. As you see, we have progress going on here. Yes. You, you see Bertha? She is in the his house, yes. Happy Thanksgiving. I am about to make a sour cream pound cake. That will be our dessert. I normally would make a sweet potato pie, but I don't even feel like doing all of that. So, I'm using a bunt um, cake pan. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pr prepare my pan first. <clears throat> if you don't wanna do what I'm about to do, get this. This works wonders, and your cake will come out perfectly, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of the butter that I had sitting out, and I'm going to put it in here. It's the base, the same basic concept, except this is going to make my outside of my pound cake buttery, and that's what I want. I want a nice crust, and I want it to be nice and buttery. Yes, you see this? Mm -hmm. But we don't stop right there. Once you have it buttered down, take some flour, put it in there. Now, I am going to shake this 
around. It's hard to do it <laughs> going towards you. And I'm actually gonna um, just turn it around, making sure that I get it all in my cake pan. And voila, there you go. So now you just take a towel, get this out the way. Move this to the side, I can get that later. My bowl. Please use a big bowl because there are gonna be multiple ingredients that go inside of here. First, we're gonna start off with some butter. I have a half a stick of uh, salted butter and a half a stick of non-salted butter. Uh, most people will say just use one or the other or use unsalted, but I'm using both. Now, I have that. I'm going to add three cups of sugar. So the two sticks of butter is basically one cup of softened butter. Now I'm adding my three cups of sugar. Now, I will put this into the pan. It's great when you have someone to help you for this part. If not, you need to make sure that you turn the pan as you go along. Gonna get the rest of it around the pan. I mean, around the bowl, and put into the pan in the areas where I see that it's low. Okay. Now, take this from the center. Shake it. You see what it's doing? And just make sure I clear that. Make sure we get the bubbles out of it. See, one of them came out. I don't know if you saw that. We're going to put it in the oven and I'll let you see what it looks like once we are finished. Look at that. Ooh, delicious. Happy Thanksgiving! It is I, said the spy. Anyway, you know I've been hard at it. You've been following me for this journey. You see all the food behind me. I've been cooking and cleaning as I go along. You see that over there? 
Yes. So I'm down to my giblet gravy. Um, I actually used my rice cooker over there. You see that over there? And the yeast roller right next to it. And I have the turkey. I mean, it is it is on and popping in here. So now you've already seen Cherie, but now you're about to see the man, the myth, the legend, the Sunday Backyard Farmer. Ding, 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 ding. Hey guys, it's Sunday Backyard Farmer. Hey. Hey, honey. Hey. Tell them the happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Now, explain your bracelet. So aggressive. Um, this bracelet right here is, if you find yourself complaining, you're supposed to, I don't remember if you're supposed to flip it or take, put it on your other wrist. I think you're supposed to just flip it. Mm -mm. Oh, you're supposed to put it on your other wrist. Well, I haven't flipped it yet, so I haven't been complaining. I, think, I don't think I'm a complainer, but you know. Peekaboo. Anyway, and I have um, bracelets also, uh, Mir and Sharif, and they'll be getting those. And that timer that you just heard is my sour cream pound cake. You know I'm over here looking over here. The camera is like right here. I'm looking over there. But anyway, so let's take a look at the pound cake. Dun, 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 dun. Let's take a look at our sour cream pound cake. Yes. Hey guys, so this is the end of my two or three day vlog that I've done for my Thanksgiving journey. I have my family here. Go anywhere. What are you thankful for today? You and your hands and being able to cook this wonderful meal. Oh, wow. Hey man, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, you recording while I'm recording? What are you thankful for? <laughs> um, and, and food. Amir, what are you thankful for? Family food and to eat the food. Yes. <laughs> All three. Sunday backyard farmer, what are you thankful for? Let's be wise. Oh my God. Okay, we're going to bless the food and eat. Bless. Thank you bless. all for joining me on this journey. And I hope that you are inspired by watching me make all of this food and all the other things going on in my life. Until next time, hashtag cooking with Dorsha, hashtag happy Thanksgiving.